Hello everybody. This time we're going to talk about bending wood. I know that side bending is one of those things that attracts a lot of people about guitar making because it seems magical and and kind of it is. Uh, wood is an amazing material, comes of course in all kinds of different varieties and is can be made to bend and hold its shape uh, by a number of means. And the one we're going to talk about today is to introduce heat and moisture um, to bend the wood. So first, before we talk about how we do it, let's talk about just the wood. So wood is a, a composite material. It's made of cellulose fibers or tubes that grow vertically, for the most part, vertically in the tree. And it's bound together with a material called lignin. And, um, you know, if you want to have some fun, just look up, some, look up those two words and, and you can see how those things interact. So um, when, when we bend wood, we know that one side, the outside of the bend, is stretching and um, the inside of the bend is compressing. So when we think about that a little further, we can make a drawing here of a, what an engineer would call a clamped beam. In other words, we put a clamp on this end and then we apply a load to this end. Now it's sort of like a person standing on the end of a diving board. So when you apply a load, um, it's going to bend in response to that load. And we know that the, like we just said, the outside material on top here is going to be stretching. And on the inside of the curve at the bottom, it's going to be compressing. Now, it stands to reason that if it's stretching here and compressing here, somewhere in the center, maybe in the center or somewhere near the center is going to be some place where one thing stops and the other thing begins. So this we're going to call a neutral plane. The neutral plane is where there isn't any stretching or compressing. So when we bend wood enough, of course, it's going to break. And so when we stress wood, it's going to fail and it fails on the outside. It always fails in, in tension, on the tension side, right? So if we look on the inside, we don't see really any damage in compression. It all lets loose and breaks on the outside. So when we want to control a piece of wood that we're bending and be able to put a sharp bend in it the way we do for a guitar, we need to help to support somehow the outside of the material so that it doesn't fail in tension, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you how I like to do that. But first, let's talk about one more thing, and that is how stiffness of the wood varies with the thickness. So we all know that a stiffer piece of material is harder to bend than a thin piece of material. Um, everybody knows that, but maybe um, everybody doesn't know what the relationship is between those two things. And this is very important in guitar making or any kind of fine woodworking uh, where you're trying to figure out how much strength you need and, and in, in particular here, how, how, what you can get away with for bending. Now, it turns out that the stiffness of a piece of material uh, is varies with the cube of the thickness of the material, all other things being equal. So here I have four pieces of wood um, sawn from the same little board, and I've got four, four thicknesses marked here. This is um, 27 thousandths or 0.68 millimeters, and of course this is very bendy, um, not a problem. We can, we can make a circle out of this and it's not going to break, okay? And now we have a piece 55 thousandths thick, and this is twice as thick. 
So when we try and make a circle out of this, I'm sensing this is about all I'm going to be able to get. I'm feeling like it's about to break here. Now if we, if we go again, here's 70 thousandths. This one, even less. And again, 98 thousandths. Boy, this is pretty, this is pretty stiff. Really stiff. So a small change in thickness means a big change in stiffness. The, again, the cube function. So this 55 thousandths piece is about eight times stiffer than, than this 27 thousandths piece. And that's important to, to remember that um, bending thick material is tough stuff. It really is. And um, if you want to make things easy on yourself, you'll try and use the thinnest wood consistent with the results that you want. Okay, so this is straight grain material. We can do a lot with straight grain material in thin pieces and it doesn't bust. But um, in instrument making, often we don't use straight grain material, we use figured material. And it could be curly, like this maple, or blistered, like this poplar, or blistered, like this, this uh, mahogany material. And this introduces a new challenge, because uh, in, in figured materials, what you see is literally what you get. In other words, we'll look at this crazy piece of blistered maple and you see how reflective and wonderful it is in appearance on this side. When you look at the outside, well, there's the cambium surface, the outside of the tree, and you can see the topography of this. This is why it looks like that, because it is uh, distorted and it grows in this funny distorted way for reasons that um, we don't understand. I don't think anybody really understands why this happens. So what, what that means is that instead of nice straight grain lines like we have in this this example, it's a piece of poplar, we have grain lines that are going all kinds of crazy ways and you can see here the failure of this thin piece um, across the grain. Um, woodworkers call this short grain. In other words, the grain lines, instead of being along the length of the part, are going at an angle. And this is a pretty abrupt angle here. And if I were to give this almost any force, it would just burst straight across the part in a jagged break. So this presents an extra challenge when we're bending figured material for guitars. And if you're going to make a, a wagon wheel or something out of a big section, um, you can use steam and uh, you know, you'll need a heavy duty rig that holds the ends of the material while it's being bent. In other words, it captures the length of the material so that the outside um, is unable to stretch. It, it, it supports it in tension and it puts all the forces in compression by limiting the length of the piece of material as it's bent. But when we build a, we build a guitar and we want to get a side to come out like this, there isn't any practical way to do that. So we have to figure out a new way to limit the damage that could happen by breaking. And one, one way to do it, the way I like to do it, is to, um, to reinforce the material. So what I'll do is I'll glue a piece of linen to the outside of this material. And so then when we apply a load on it, um, the, the linen, or you could use other fibers, but I like linen, the linen helps to um, support the load in tension, and it strengthens the surface of the wood a lot uh, in tension. The, the linen fibers um, are the ones that take the tension. And this is an example of the material that I like. This is what they call handkerchief linen, and it's uh, about nine thousandths thick, nine thousandths of an inch. 
and it's a plain weave. In other words, there's um, pretty much the same number of fibers going in uh, both the warp and the weft direction, and and there, so it's a balanced a balanced cloth. But as you can see, the way I use it, I deliberately cut it out uh, on the on the bias or 45 degree, so that um, it it's crossways to the fibers in the wood, plus or minus 45, we call it. And fiber orientation is always important in guitar making or any kind of woodworking. And now that we're trying to support, support the material uh, while we bend it, we're going to have support coming in both these diagonal directions. And it's going to help to help us in two ways. First thing is that it's going to it's going to move the um, this neutral plane. It's going to move that neutral plane way way up in the material like like this. So if this is our linen reinforcement, then the neutral plane is going to move from here way up this surface, so that almost no material will be in tension and all the material will be in compression. In other words, the linen and the, the glue that we use to attach the linen to the wood is going to increase the tensile strength um, of this side of the material and it'll help us in, or, in order to keep this from breaking. So it'll help to reinforce the outside of the material and keep it from bursting on the outside when we're trying to bend it. The other thing that happens, which is really important, is that because we've got this nice even structure, unlike a figured material like this, or like this, um, or like this, where we've got all kinds of anomalies and turnarounds and changes, it's going to help keep the side flat while we bend it. And if we look here, at how this side distorted when it was bent, you can see that it's nowhere near flat across the width of this material anymore. This was a nice flat piece before I tried to bend it, and now you can see it's all cattywampus and crazy curves across the grain, which is going to make things really difficult later to try and turn a part like this into a a nicely um, sanded guitar. So, what we'll do is we will glue some linen to the to the outside of the bends, and that's going to help us support the material and keep it from bursting. And it's also going to help keep the uh, keep the material in column. And so that means it's going to be straight when we put a straight edge on these places on the guitar that has a heavy bend. You're going to see that it comes out nice and straight across the grain. Well, here's one of these sides that, that's already been done. Now, this is a um, piece of mahogany from the so-called tree. It's from Belize and you know, maybe the most famous lumber tree ever cut. And we are going to... Um, in the next segment, we're going to take this material and glue linen patches to it. I'll show you how I do it and how it works.